Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today with Tips and Tricks with Patrick Duchesne of Duchesne Design Solutions. Hey, Patrick, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. Sure. That's our next installment of uh, your Tips and Tricks for all of our attendees today. We've got uh, quite a registration. This looks like it's uh, shaping up to be a great uh, webinar. Uh, today, uh, we're covering um, off. So first, we're going to do some housekeeping. But after we do that, um, Patrick is going to take us into a bit of a deeper dive and um, show us uh, just how um, to prepare uh, a drawing for full dimensioning. Uh, we're going to do uh, best practices for plant picture catalogs, or as Patrick calls them, plant packets. Best practices <laughs> for raster images uh, in Dynascape designs. He's going to do a bit of a refresher on moving rasters quickly around a drawing. I know we've covered it off in a previous uh, webinar, but um, we found that sometimes I have to slow Patrick down because he moves through it so fast as he's so uh, na such a natural at uh, being able to do this that uh, sometimes other people can't uh, really pick up on what he's doing. So we're going to do a refresher on that and uh, a refresher on streamlining uh, the plant picture catalog process. Um, but first, um, we are going, to, we're recording this webinar now, um, and everything is going to be posted uh, just like we've posted our previous webinars uh, to the Dynascape website. We will be posting this webinar uh, shortly after um, we go off the air uh, to our website in line with the other webinars uh, so that you can review it at another time. And um, You'll also have lots of opportunity to ask questions. There is a question box in the GoToWebinar control panel. Please enter your questions there, and uh, I'll be monitoring them, uh, answering them as I can. And if I can't, I'm definitely going to make sure that Patrick answers those uh, and gives us a demonstration on how to answer those questions. And uh, we'll try to get to as many questions as possible, uh, of course, as long as time allows. I don't think we're going to go with a full uh, hour on this webinar. Um, a lot of things are real quick to show. And um, uh, because Patrick is so speedy, we'll probably show him a couple of times. And uh, we're aiming to have this webinar uh, done with questions in about 30 to 35 minutes. So it is going to be a quick one, but uh, really, really informative. So Patrick, I am going to hand it back over to you now. And uh, okay. if you wouldn't mind taking us through uh, all of those points and uh, showing the group um, and giving them some, uh, showing those uh, folks the uh, tips and tricks that you've learned. So let me switch sure, this over sure. and make you our presenter and give you control. And uh, should be over to you now. You see my screen? I can see your screen. Okay, good. All right. Hello, everybody. I have no idea which webinar this is because they're starting to add up, which is good. And um, we won't keep you too long today, but I wanted to show you, I'm not sure if we've done dimensioning yet. Uh, we've done quite a few of the other things, but I just wanted to refresh everybody because since um, since we did do the webinar with plant images and trying to streamline your plant labeling, I'm still seeing people not really doing it. So I really want to hit this home because as long as I've been using this, um, I wish I would have done some of this plant image and plant favorite stuff a long time ago. So it, it really made a big difference to me. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into dimension planning. So, dimensioning is a really crucial thing as far as, um, you know, not really with the estimating part of your drawing because you're going to use more of um, your your tools like getting square footages, clicking inside an area to get those, as well as your linear footage dimensions like the perimeter of the house, you know, it shows you the length here. So these areas and length tool really are not what we're going to be talking about with dimensioning. What we're going to be using is the actual 
Dimension Tools, and it's right up here. It's the DIM thing, and it says Toggle the Visibility of the Dimension Toolbox. So it's a pretty darn easy process, but it's pretty pretty important. The purpose of dimensioning is so you can give, let's say you're sending these plans out for bid, you're trying to get a carpenter to give you pricing on building a pergola or a pavilion or, or somebody's building you a pool. You want to be able to convey these dimensions to them so they can quickly and accurately give you uh, estimated numbers or budgets or whatever. So um, the other thing is for crews and for installation, I remember sending guys out and, uh, you know, you have one guy or two guys standing with a shovel and then you have two guys measuring and it just, it just, it would drive me nuts seeing that time wasted where guys are standing around. And obviously customers aren't thrilled either because they're paying for those guys to stand around. So as soon as I started getting into mentioning plans, it really cut a lot of that out. So in your drawing, if you are layering everything correctly, as far as when I say layering, I mean using the correct layers, you're going to be able to go over to this. Um, most of the time when you're drawing, these little pieces of paper are highlighted, and those are layers. But right here, it's like a, it's like a little yellow piece of paper folding over, and it says display the mode list. If I were to click this and go through here, um, if I just want to see my perennials, I can see my perennials. We're going to do a whole webinar on modes. Um, I've never really used modes a lot, but I actually was just training somebody yesterday in New Jersey, and he showed me a lot of things about no, uh, modes that absolutely blew my mind that I was already, the, the wheels were going in my head of how can I, sh how can I use this to help people get quicker and more efficient and more productive? So, I've got that all mapped out, and we're going to do that in the next couple of webinars. But um, right here is dimension mode. So you see what happened. All the plants disappeared. Um, let's go back. Design mode. All the plants, all the labels are here. But once we go to dimension, they're gone. So this is really cool because when you, um, you don't need all the plants for dimension mode, and it gets a little bit cumbersome. And uh, we want to show if, we, you know, if this is a patio, it would be a little bit more important for where the center point of this radius is for this bed. But it's nice to have it clean. Um, or you're, you know, you sell this job in August or September and you start it in October or November and you don't want to put any plant material in. So you just send this with your hardscape crew. Um, you want to show them these dimensions. Now, in here, I have this sealed inlaid. I don't really need this, um, so I'd like to kind of put that away. So if I can control, if I control click on that, it's going to show me when I click display. That's on the border layer, and I put that on it because it's a little bit lighter. So I'm going to double click this. Let's go see. It's easy to look at the number, actually more importantly than the letter, uh, the word. So I'm going to double click border or uh, the layers. And I'm going to go down to number seven, and I'm just going to turn that off too. So now everything is gone that I need. My cars, I really don't need my vehicles in there, and those are layer 26. So let's just put those away for now too. So go down to 26, shut those off. The rocks, that's okay. I'm not going to worry about the rocks. Now, now we have a really clean drawing that we have no congestion other than what we need to show our crew. So in this tool, there are a few different options here. This one says insert a linear dimension. So this, because it's on an angle, you can do it any way you want. As soon as you put constraints on, though, it's going to give you these orthotic constraints, 45, 90, uh, the other thing you can do, which I've shown you before, if you just hold down shift and control, it also gives you those constraints. So this is if you're doing any kind of weird angles or you're doing a 45 degree angle, you can just shift control or hit constraints and get that 45 degree measurement. 
So, uh, like, I would start out maybe showing them um, maybe where this first pillar will start off the step. So this is insert a horizontal dimension. I can't go anywhere but left and right. So I'm going to, I'll put inference on so you can see that it's on normally. I would just hold down, um, I would just hold down my shift key and it gives me inference. If I take my shift key off, I lose it. But let's just do this so when people watch the webinar, they know that inference is on. I'm just going to click this first point. I'm going to click that first point with my left click. Then I'm going to kind of float this up here and then left click and right click. So really easily that shows that that first pillar starts seven foot six off of that. Let's give them this point here. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to click that. That's two feet 11. Um, if you get two feet 11 to a crew to build pavers, they're going to look at you, maybe think you're a little crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it to three feet. It's a half an inch. So let's give them three feet. So they know three feet out is this dimension. And you can work your way around. This dimension here, three feet nine, right there. So you really can just work your way around and give them what they need. Now, as you can see, this is starting to get pretty confusing. It's getting jumbly. And, um, you know, there's a real art to dimension plans, and I'm still, I'm still um, trying to improve on making these as clear as possible. Uh, so what I've kind of started to do, which a lot of guys like, is I will go around and I'll get, all of these dimensions and just start clicking all these points of where I need to be and then I'll go here to inserting text I call it floating text but and I will start stacking all of these I call them stacking so this first dimension right here was three feet this next one was three feet nine from he this point here to this point here. So I'm going to click three foot nine inches, enter. Then the next dimension was five feet 11, which is this point to this point. So I'm going to click five foot 11 inches, enter. So the next point was here to here was seven feet. I'm going to put seven feet. And then let's do one more, 24 foot one. 24 foot one inch. Now, there's two ways to insert this text. And, and um, I, I think I've gone over this before. If I click apply, it's going to bring all of these in at one time. If I click multi, I can bring in one at a time. So I'm going to put three, three foot nine, five foot eleven, seven foot, twenty four foot one, and then let's just get rid of whoops, let's get rid of these dimensions. That doesn't need to be there. That doesn't need to be there. If you wanted to, you could take these and rotate them like this so you can kind of show uh, kind of wrapping these corners, and then we'll just move this point over here. That seems to be where a lot of guys kind of like it because it's very easy for the crew to say, okay, three feet, three feet nine, five foot eleven, seven foot, and you literally can just walk them right around here. So here I would put seven foot six inches and float this right here and maybe get rid of that. So I kind of like this because it's very clean. Crews can understand it and it doesn't add a lot of congestion to a drawing. Um, so let's say we want to show how far away 
some of these things are, like how far off of the step this border is and then what the dimension of this is and what this is. There's also stacking dimensions where I can do multiple. This is really cool. Multiple dimensions, and I'm not doing all these individuals. So I'm going to practice using that up on this square. So let's grab this, and it says, insert a vertical baseline dimension. I mean, I call them stacked dimensions because that's really kind of what they do. So our inference, let's turn our inference on. And so we'll click here, 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 and here. And then I'm going to right click, and it ends that last dimension. And let's float this out. So it's starting to get a little congested. So I could take this, what is this? Let's do that again. So this is what I'm saying. It can get a little bit jumbly. So we'll start on one, two, three, four, five. Float these out. They're still getting a little bit stacked. We'll do this. Actually, we don't really need to. We could get rid of that. So what this is showing us is, like, from this step to this point, it's 20 inches. From this point here all the way down to here is 14 foot 3. From the step down to the edge of the border is 15 foot 3. So it really stacks these things nicely, where if I wanted to show where this driveway, let's say they're putting in a new driveway, I could bring this and start this at the corner of the house. And you can see where the whole length of that garage in the back of the house area is 52 feet, but the driveway is going to end at 28 foot 8. So it's really nice. The other way you would do it, which would take a little bit longer, would you would have to go from this point to this point and make one. Then you would have to start from here, go all the way up, and bring this over, which isn't terrible, but that's a lot more steps. You have to go grab a tool. Um, you know, this is, I just think this is a lot. You know, to just click one, two, three. So that's the stacking tool. It works vertically and horizontally. So I can click one point here here, here, right click to end that last one and click. So what this shows us is from this point on the garage, we need to go out about 9 foot 10 and a half, 9 foot 11 to this curve, to where the curve starts. Then the curve ends at 17, 10, and then the drive goes all the way out to 51 foot 6. So the next thing we want to show them maybe is where our bed lines are going to be. And with radiuses, the best thing to do is show where the center point of that radius is. So this tool, it's such a simple tool. I think it's one of the neatest tools in all of Dynascape design. All you do is click this circle, and when you read it, it says insert a radius. And I just click on here, and then left click and right click. And it gives me my radius. Then what I, I like to do is go and I grab this air conditioner and I put it right here and I shrink it. And that just shows where those center points are a little bit easier. Um, I just like to have that point. And then I'll just take this and let's copy the air conditioner right up to this other one. So it's pretty obvious where those points are. So now if we need to show our crew, well, not if we need to, we want to, where to put our pin so one person can take the tape measure out nine feet and then paint this point. So let's go to the dimension tool. Let's run from this corner. Now this is kind of tricky because you think you have to go straight out, but you can go right to this center point here. And that's four feet five a foot away. And then left click and right click. 
Actually, let's move that up a little bit to create a little bit more room. So hit the corner. Uh, let's see. Hit the corner right there. Run right here, four foot five. And then let's slow that up a little bit more. So we know it's four feet five away, but how far away is it from the corner down? So we run this number from the corner down to the center point here, and it's three feet. So we can give them that dimension too. So you can send you can send two people out to a job a couple days before you set your job up with this. And really quickly, they can put their pins in the ground. They can start painting these radiuses. I could give them this radius here. I could give them this radius here. And they can really lay this out pretty quickly. Um, from this pillar down, again, pretty darn easy. Run our dimension. It's, it's as simple as that. So if we have any questions on dimensions, um, you know, please feel free to ask those ones just over at the end. Um, any questions on dimensioning yet, Joe? Yeah, so I've got one from Jeff. Um, mm -hmm. You notice that uh, dimensions on the design won't appear in Dynascape color. He wants to know if he's doing something wrong or is just that's the way it is. Since they generally provide a color copy um, for the books mm -hmm. for their crew, they like to have dimensions on that presentation. Um, mm -hmm. Currently just printing a black and white copy. Now, I can't remember... Uh, I don't know if I've actually done it, but does that? I don't think so. I yeah. I've never been able to. And um, just to show you a really quick example, if I were to take a small drawing, I think the answer is no. That could be a support thing. But if I, if we draw a box in here, and I dimension the box, so I'm going to do two things. I'm going to have this dimension here. I'm going to put this dimension here, but just, this is how you learn. You, I'm going to explode this dimension. So see, I'm going to hit explode, and now it's all these different pieces. Let's save this as, on the desktop, dimension, color. Uh, dimension, color. So now, let's open up color quick. Open that drawing. So the intact dimension didn't show up, and the exploded one does, did. So if you want to have your dimensions on color, you're going to have to explode them. Um, but this is maybe something, Joe, where uh, he could email you, and you could get 100% confirmation from yeah. support about that because this is a question I do get um, I'd like to put dimensions on my color plan but it's not showing up how can we do this yeah and so uh, you could almost have what you would want to really do is just make sure you have these in a layer that you can really easily turn on and off if you want to so they can go away and they're not congesting a presentation drawing so Great. it's doable <laughs> okay, um, so that's pretty much dimensioning. Now, let's go back into our design mode and work on, let's get rid of some of these. So that came in on my accessories layer because I was on my accessories layer when I did it. We can leave these here for now. So best, best practices for plant picture catalogs. Um, this was sent to me by support this file and it might be in the user manual but this is a whole perfect uh, really well explained um, information on how to resize images I'm not going to show batch um, resizing today but what I am going to do is show people how to size their plant pictures for packets. So um, when you bring in plant images on a drawing or any kind of images, they all have a certain size to them. And the more images you load on your drawing, 
the more information that drawing has. And then when you take it into color, color sometimes, um, if it doesn't like how much it is, it'll, it'll, I can't even remember because I, I have my images set pretty well, but I've heard where um, individuals can't print the drawing, it crashes. I've had problems in the past before I resized them and I had really large plant picture images where my plant packet, when I try to create it, it would just crash because it's just so much stuff. So here's what we want to do. Um, let's say we go online and we look up winter gem boxwood and we click on images and let's just uh, find something that looks halfway decent like I don't know that doesn't look like winter gem but let's just uh, this is good let's save this image as on the desktop we're going to call this winter gem boxwood okay now let's close this let's minimize this click to the desktop so if I were to open this with paint, and this is what support actually told me to do, every um, Windows computer, I think even with Windows 10, comes with Microsoft Paint. So you right click here, open with paint. So there's that picture. When you click on resize and click on pixels, see where it says 225 and 225? That's this number here, 300 by 300. That is the number that however support um, and Joe's team, however they figured out, um, that's the right size to make sure that our designs and our color presentations and our packets will be able to handle all of this, this raster um, information. I guess it end, ends up really um, equating to memory, right, Joe? Pretty much? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So, we want to have these at a max of 300. So, let's resize it to 300. Now, I will be truthful in saying that some of mine are more than 300, and I haven't had problems. Some are 600, some are 700. But, I'm not putting tons of images on my drawings anymore, either. So, I'm not worrying so much about it, but if you're one who does like to put a lot of images on your drawings, try to hover around this. And, uh, you know, you can have a whole plant images file saved and everything works fine, but um, there might be an instance where you have a new plant that you need to introduce to your plant palette, and as soon as you make a plant packet, it crashes. Well, you need to start thinking, okay, what just caused this problem? What did I, what was the last thing? This, this is like a, a normal support question. Even when I send stuff in, they'll say, what was the last thing? Or can you recreate the steps of what happened? Um, if you bring in a new plant and it crashes, you're going to want to look at the size of that. So try to discipline yourself when you do make new pictures for anything with plant pictures, fireplaces, that you resize these right off the bat so you end up with a really manageable plant image and hardscape image library that you're not going to have a lot of problems with. So let's say, let's resize it to 300 and then I'm just, I just do this, click that, I'm going to click save. So now if I were to open this with paint and click resize, now it's at 300 by 300. That's a very manageable size. So try to do it up front. Um, a little bit of upfront work just pays dividends in the long run. So that's really the best practices for that um, and raster images on a drawing. So I want to just go over again real quick about moving raster images around a drawing. So uh, again, this is probably in the big manual. Another way you can access it is going up here to help and going to online user manual. And when you click that, this is great. Everybody should have this saved on their computer. If you click this, 
it goes right here and I can click this button and depending on your internet speed there is everything I need and I can right click and save this whole thing on my desktop so in the future if I want to access my manual all we do is double click this so try to do that like I'm not going to say when we get done with the webinar but it sure beats lugging around the big user manual um, it's nice having this in your computer for really quick reference so let's just go over um, inserting our uh, or moving raster images around to drawing again um, so let's say we want to put that boxwood picture on here um, but we want let's take it even a step further though let's insert a picture so let's go to slender dutia left click it and right click there's the slender dutia and let's insert this common name in the border okay so the traditional way bringing this in right here and what you want to do when you bring these images in most people do is you'll run a nice guideline let's bring one more in let's do a Serbian spruce left click right click let's insert that image and bring that one in so that's a little off and this was one of the things that kind of bothered me for a while is getting these really oriented to where I was happy with the size of each one of them and but if I wanted to move this this Serbian spruce there's two ways of doing it there's the, the, the traditional way in here Serbian spruce if I want to move this up or down I can change this X and Y coordinate if I put 30 feet and click OK see that moves to the right so you can manipulate the location of that image just on this. Um, the other way you can do it is just take the border, move the border wherever you want to put this border. Let's say we want to move it here. And go grab this tool right here. I think it's move and resize an existing, yeah. Move and resize an existing raster image. If you click on that, and click on Serbian Spruce, what the software is basically saying is this. Okay, you've selected Serbian Spruce. Where do you want to put this image? And look at what it says. Select the bounding area of the raster. Well, the bounding area I want is here. It, whoop. Serbian Spruce. Let's turn on here. Here and here. So I moved it really easily. Let's take this one and move it completely across the drawing where nothing is over there. You don't have to even see the image as long as you have them labeled correctly. Slender Dutia. You want inference on so you snap to these exact corners. And it's, it's right where you want it. So this is a great way for you, uh, those of you who like to do really nice display board kind of things with your drawings and really showcase old jobs you've done or whatever. You can organize your raster images really well. If you bring something in that does not have a border around it, let's go to this boxwood and I bring that boxwood in. All you need to do is give it a border get inference off so you don't have that little square really zoom in on that corner go in on this one okay so now we pretty much have what we had here it's a, it's not a double border so we'll take this one move it wherever we want let's put it out into space somewhere and here's my winter gem boxwood and then click the corners really great way to um, organize your raster images or job or photos or plant kind of pictures around your drawing and not having to really worry too much about your X and Y coordinates because that can be a little bit time consuming calculating how much how many feet up or down you need to move these things and hope that 
you got it right. So the last thing before we wrap up, please everybody start using favorites to label plants. If you don't have favorites and you want to label your plant material, just get rid of some of this. Well, yeah, let's get rid of these and do a few from scratch. Now, get rid of this. Let's just clean this up a little. Okay, first of all, when you're labeling, run yourself some guidelines. Run yourself one, or maybe you like to stagger them, which I think kind of looks nice. Now, you go to the little daisy here. Now, this is really interesting. I meet... Um, I'm still seeing people who have used software for years who are still doing this. One winter gem boxwood. And that's how, I'm not making fun of anybody, I'm just saying that's how they're doing it. Now watch though, if I don't have any other labels on here, if I go to make a plant packet, Export. See, it says this drawing contains no eligible softscape items. This is one way for me to see if somebody's doing things correctly. I also can't export anything because there's nothing there. This doesn't help you at all. You're manually counting, and you can't quickly get an Excel spreadsheet or a plant packet. So, the correct way to do this is you go into here, and if you don't have any favorites set up, you can import a list, which I don't, I think in some circumstances it works, um, but if you really don't want a bloated, quote unquote, database of plant material in there, add them as you go, and within five, six drawings, you're gonna be pretty much where you need to be adding them in. So let's start in, di in dynascape.com, and let's add, um, let's do this. Let's search for Terex. Um, but I think the one, I don't use Ice Dance, but let's see if there's Ice Dance. Okay, there's Ice Dance. Um, click Go. Click on the plant you want to label. And then left click, left click, right click. So there's my one Ice Dance. That's great. Because now I do have my ice dance that will show up, and I can now export that to a plant picture catalog. But I don't really care for this picture, and I want my own custom picture every single time, and I don't want to have to keep going to this. So here's what you want to do what you want to do. Again, this is that initial setup work. Let's right-click it and add it to my favorites. So now when I click Edit My Plant List and I type in Ice Dance, well, Ice D, there's Ice Dance. So watch. This was, um, this was one of the first three or four webinars we did, and I spent quite a bit of time on this, but I'm going to do it again because it's such an incredible time-saving tool. So this is the default horticopia picture. If you don't like this, you can go to custom image and go in and select anything you want. Now, I don't even know if I have ice dance in because I don't really use that one. But if you wanted to do ice dance, let's just pretend this is ice dance. So now, this is the image that will happen when, or this is what will populate in a plant picture catalog. And it is the one that will populate if you want to bring it on your drawing every single time. So you're not fumbling around with putting, uh, changing the photocopia one to yours. You can change this if you want. Um, you could just put Ice Dance Carex here. You can add a size. So let's do a number one and put a price. So let's say $5, $5.5. Let's consider it a grass. I mean, it's really a sedge, whatever, technically. But um, so what this is telling me before I save it is 
this is what's going to show up on a drawing, this for this. This is the picture that's going to show up in my plant packet. This is the size. This is the price. And in a plant schedule, this is where it's going to be um, uh, categorized. Now, you can go through here and mess around with all these zones, but that, that in my opinion, is for somebody who may not know their plants, who uh, wants to look in your existing database at things that use that can take full sun or shade or or these conditions, but I don't really you know I don't really mess with those. So let's save it and close it. Now, when we go to my favorites, see it's in here. So now we're going to label it with my favorites, and I'm going to click go. So this is really where this gets pretty dynamic. When I go to label this or uh, not label, but put the plant picture in, I left click and right click it, and look, there's the picture right off the bat. And click include common name. Click insert image, put my image right here. Let's take it to a plant packet or a plant picture catalog. I want to make sure I use that so support doesn't get after me. Um, uh, we go to file, export, plant picture catalog, and when I select this, there's the picture that is on my plant picture catalog. So we'll put plant, plant picture catalog, or if you're in Canada, you added G-U-E. Um, click Finish. Let's save this on our desktop. Plant picture catalog. And if you have Adobe Reader, there's your plant packet or a plant picture catalog. So if this thing had 30 pictures, it'll have um, seven pages or eight pages. They have six, per, whatever, six uh, drawings per page. So very quick way to make a plant picture catalog. These are really useful when you do final walkthroughs on your jobs and you print one of these and you take it with you and you hand it to your customer, even though you may have given them one before. And they can write their notes of, okay, when do I cut back my carry -offers? or when do I deadhead my whatever. And they can put that in their job folder and then that can save you some that can save you some questions. So now we also can click this button. Let's let's export the price, the size, the common name, and the quantity and send it to an Excel spreadsheet. So here's my ice ant and my sizing. Now, real quick, and then I'll kind of turn it back over to Joe. Another angle that you could take this, if you want to use this for quick estimating, um, instead of putting your cost, maybe you put what your installed price is. So if your installed price is, most of the time it's like times three to three and a half, Let's just say that your number one containers of these end up being $18 installed. Let's save it and close it. So let's get rid of this label and redo it so it has the right information behind it and do ice dance. But let's just pretend there's 55 and I manually insert 55. When I click this and I go to Excel, that's showing you that's the installed price. So you can tell somebody it's going to be about $1,000 to install 55 of these, which, you know, it seems like a lot of money for 55 perennials, but, you know, it is what it is. So please start practicing with that tool. Um, I think it might be like webinar two or three that we really went into detail on that, but it has really saved my design time a lot. So that is pretty much it. I do want to remind everybody a very um, a very good update just came out. I think it was last week uh, for design and um, it fixed uh, a, a kind of a small glitch of if you had a kind of a curved poly, you know, if you had a polyline like this and it kind of had something like that, if you were to click inside to measure, it would give you this, it would like outline it blue and then like cut it off, but that was fixed and a few other things. So, 
you know, that's one great thing about um, Sinuscape is when they find something wrong, it's usually fixed within an update. You don't have to wait a whole year to get a surprise to have a fix. So that was a that was a really nice thing that they they did. There are four or five other features in that update too. So just really once every three to four weeks, just do your updates. And here's what you do, just in case you don't know how to do it. Click your tile down here, click all apps, and go to Dynascape. And see, I click on this, and it'll run, and it'll check up here for an update. And if you don't need an update, it'll say no. Just do a design and color once a month, okay? Just be safe. So that's that's all I have for that. Thanks so much, Patrick. So I'm just going to take this back a little bit. Uh -huh. There we go. So uh, thank you so much. We uh, learned a ton, and uh, you're getting a lot better. I don't have to uh, slow you down. So <laughs> I know. Well, I do it two or three times because the first time I learned the hard way, you're like, okay, slow it down. Yeah. So. Absolutely. So, yeah, thank you uh, a lot for sure. uh, that. And um, uh, thanks for mentioning the, uh, the update that we uh, recently pushed out. Mm -hmm. Will uh, so when we when we do an update and when we release it, um, before we do that, we will send an email to everyone saying that there is an update and uh, the details of what is in that particular update. So, um, mm -hmm. as long as you have your email address uh, registered with us, then uh, you'll get those updates. Um, thank you so much. My name is Joe Salemi, Product Marketing Manager with Dynascape Software. My contact information is on the screen. Um, if you have any uh, suggestions for improvements, new features, fixes, please get a hold of me. I am your contact for that. Um, if uh, Dynascape can help you in any way, uh, please reach out and uh, let me know, and uh, we'll figure out how we can do that. Um, I've been asked that uh, when we publish this video, uh, when we put it on the uh, website, if we can put a little bit of a description. We have been, I have started doing that with uh, all the webinars so that you do know what uh, all of Patrick's webinars do entail. There's uh, some points where um, uh, you will understand what is in each webinar before uh, reviewing it. So uh, we will uh, send out the link to the recording uh, shortly after, but. Um, Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, stay tuned for our next installment, hopefully coming up mid-March. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Patrick, appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll see you again soon. Take care, everyone.